Hello YouTube, welcome to Coding with Dom. I'm Dom and this is supposed to be me coding, but if you've seen my previous video, you'll know that rather than coding, it's going to be me showing you code. Because I forgot to press record while I was doing all of this stuff, and so now it's just me recapping what I did. Uh, I can't be bothered to record it from scratch, I'm going to be totally honest with my audience, but this might be useful nonetheless. I hope you find it useful. If you do, leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell, share it with the world, share it with everyone, and yeah, let's get started. So what are we going to look at today? We're going to look at how to run tests with browser stack. So in my previous video, I showed you how you can run tests in CI with Travis. If you're not using Travis, or if you have uh, a private repository, or if you have your own uh, CI system, or if simply you want to run tests manually every now and again, and you want to be able to test on multiple browsers, Browser Stack is a great option, a great solution. Um, so what Browser Stack allows you to do is it gives you a Selenium grid with all kinds of browsers and browser combinations. You have uh, different operating systems, different browsers, different devices. You can run on mobile, on tablet, on PC. So it's really, really powerful. Um, now before in my pre, let's see if I can do this again. But uh, I showed you how to get through the uh, basic sign up process, but it's fairly simple. You just sign up uh, for a free trial. In, in this case, I'm going to sign in. Let's see if it picks up my stuff. Um, yes, it does. And once you've signed in, what you're going to do, I don't want to buy a plan. Sorry for clicking that. What you want to do is you want to go to products and automate. Now what Automate does is it allows you to use a Selenium grid. In this case, you're already seeing my test runs, but there is a page. Let me see if I can find it. Um, da, 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 da. Yes, browserstat.com slash automate slash Nightwatch. What this does is it explains how to integrate um, Selenium with Nightwatch, but uh, it's not quite up to date. So I will, if I manage to, I think I'm gonna send a pull request to this place. Uh, if you follow this guide, like without changing anything, things won't work. So there are some micro modifications you'll have to do. I'll try and point them out right now in the code. Um, but the most important thing you want to get from here, if I keep scrolling, I'm not going to keep scrolling because otherwise I'm going to show it on screen. I don't want to share my access key with the world. But if you keep scrolling, you can see your specific user and your specific access key. That's once you've logged into the platform and signed up for the free trial. Free or trial, by the way, doesn't require a credit card or anything. It's just give me 100 minutes of automation testing, which is plenty. And um, what you're going to need from this page to follow what I'm going to be showing now is your uh, dedicated pro, uh, username and access key. Once you have that, I want you to create a file called .m. Now, I'm not going to open this file because, again, I'm going to be showing you my private uh, access key otherwise. But what this looks like, what this file looks like is something like this. Browser stack user equals uh, coding with DOM, I think, in my case, but you'll have your own. And then I have browser stack key, which is something very long and random. So you need to put this stuff in your .m file. If you're running tests in CI and you want to use browser stack, you're going to have to put those environment variables inside the CI system. Most CI systems allow you to specify environment variables. So once I have that and I've put that stuff inside my m file, you need to install a package called .env. So that's what I've done right here, a dependency called .env. And what .env does is if you run it at the very beginning of your nightwatch.conf.js file, is it grabs everything in the .env file and it puts it on process.env, which is the default for node environment variables. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I don't want to expose my credentials. I don't want to expose my access keys. And it's probably the same for you as well. You don't want to hard code that stuff inside your configuration files, because then anyone can just come along, use it and use up your free minutes. So once you've grabbed your configuration, uh, your credentials, you have put them in a safe place. Uh, what I did was duplicate, well, not duplicate, but extend my default configuration uh, by adding a new file called nightwatch.browserstack.conf .js. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the base configuration, I'm extending the base configuration with a new property called 
web driver. Now this property is actually in the base configuration and this is where the browser stock documentation browser stack documentation is out of date. So uh, in the old Nightwatch version, this would be Selenium because uh, Nightwatch was built with Selenium in mind. But in the new version, the Selenium property has been deprecated in favor of the WebDriver pro property because WebDriver better reflects uh, what uh, we're actually talking about because not always you're going to be using Selenium. If you see in my default example, we're not using Selenium, we're using Chrome Driver. So what's the big difference between the base configuration and the browser stack? The first difference is that in, in the default configuration, we're telling Nightwatch to start the Chrome driver process for us. So we're telling it where Chrome driver actually is. Uh, this is where you can find Chrome driver, and I want you to start the process for me. In the case of browser stack, we don't need Nightwatch to start a process for us because browser stack has the Selenium grid up and running. So we're going to say start process false. So don't start the process and just use the browser stack hub uh, as the endpoint for the Selenium grid. Uh, once we've done that, uh, if, if you keep following the um, browser stack guide, it formats this in a slightly different way, but I've done it this way because I'm extending the base configuration. Um, what you have to do is put the browser stack user and key inside the default desired capabilities. And then you can run process.env you can assign uh, these two to process.env, browser stack user and key, because those things are saved in the .env file. I'm uh, removing or resetting the Chrome option arguments because by default, I'm running tests in headless mode. You might have seen I did this in my previous video. Um, cut. So in my previous video, you may have seen that I was running tests in headless mode to make them work with Travis CI. In browser stack, I don't want to do that because one of the amazing, among the different functionalities that browser stack actually has, one of the really coolest features is being able to run tests, uh, to run tests and see the videos of the test runs. But if you run tests in headless mode, the browser doesn't open up so you can't actually see the tests. Um, Last but not least, well, it's not last, and it isn't least either. <laughs> um, I'm adding an extra browser. So in the test settings, by default, we have a Chrome browser. I'm actually opening, adding a Firefox browser. Now, there are tons of different capabilities that you can add. These are things that you can get from browser stack as well. So if you go from browser stack dot, browser stack dot com dot automate, I keep forgetting I can actually do this and point to things like this, but I'm never going to be able to get used to that when I can just use a mouse, right? It's, I'm not sure this, never mind. What you want to do is click on capabilities and it will open up a page like this one. Now, if you use node, it will give you the format that you need, but it will also show my access key on screen. So I don't want to do that, but you can choose all kinds of OS's, mobile, desktop, uh, different browser combinations. There's all kinds of stuff. And that's where I got the information to fill in here. So we, I'm also running the test on XP just because I was a bit nostalgic and I wanted to see the nice green hills on a very old version of Firefox. And finally, this is again copy code that I got from the default example. You need to run this to make sure that you copy the things. Again, this was an error. It was copying from Selenium. This has to be WebDriver. So once you've done all these beautiful things, uh, because I added a new configuration file, I need to add a new script in my package JSON. I could have used the default test, just adding a new thing, but I wanted to make sure that it was easy to run. I think this is pretty much everything. Yes. Um, so I can show you this right now. If I do npm run test browser stack, what it will do is run uh, my only test suite because I've disabled the Google test suite. If you want to know why, check my previous video. Um, it runs it on Chrome. Now, didn't we define also a Firefox browser? Yes, we did. But by default, excellent question, by the way. Thanks for asking. By default, Nightwatch only runs a default browser. If we want it to run on a separate browser as well, we have to use the env variable. 
what this does is npm run testbar. It tells Nightwatch to run on default and on Firefox. So if you do this, it's going to take longer because uh, Nightwatch will only give you, give you the results once it's finished running because it uses parallel threads. Um, but once it's done, we see the defaults for Firefox, and uh, sorry, the results for Firefox and the results for defaults. But the really cool thing is when I switch back to this page, which is automate.browserstack.com. This is the dashboard where my tests are being sent to. And we can see a minute ago, we got a test run on Chrome and on Firefox. And if I click on this, it gives me all kind of cool information about my test run, how long it took, uh, whether it's local testing, who ran it, the browser capability, there are logs, network logs, console logs, all kind of stuff that can be really useful. And the nicest thing of all is that you can actually see the test on the machine. So you have a video of what went on. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell, share with the world. And if you have any questions or doubts, or if I didn't cover anything and it wasn't quite clear, please let me know down below in the comments. Thanks for following so far. Thanks for the support. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you soon. Cheers.